pleasant day to everyone. This is Jose Mario de Castro or Teacher Jomar and I'm one of the teachers here at the IS English Center. We are back once again with another interesting English topic. Today, we are going to discuss about negations and double negatives. Do you know how to say no? You don't have to answer because you probably do. But do you know how the function of the word not is different from the word no or how the adjective no is related to the adverb not? Quite confusing, right? Have you heard of sentences like this? That won't do you no good. I can't find no words to say. She didn't want nobody to see her. I'm no good. I have not money. And that won't get you nowhere. Sounds good? <laughs> they may sound good, but their meaning can be misleading. In creative writing and urban speech, ambiguity, ambivalence, and emphasis are beautiful elements portrayed by literary devices. In rhetorics, double negatives are considered as figurative languages or literary devices. They may fall under these categories. Exaggeration, pleonasm, understatement, or lidotes. Here are some of their examples. These literary devices are essential for beautifying language. However, they are considered wrong in the standard academic English. Double negatives are justified by the term literary license in creative writing. Ambiguity, ambivalence, and emphasis. These are the usual intentions that prove these statements with double negatives correct. Double negatives are highly avoided in standard academic English as for its goal is to be precisely clear. It aims to get rid of ambivalence, ambiguity, and exaggeration to provide exact details. In standard academic English, each subject predicate construction should only have one negative form. And a double negative is a non-standard sentence construction. Now comes the question, how do we avoid double negatives? Well, then we have to discuss about no. What are the main components of the adjective no? It's the adverb not. Not is the main ingredient for negating. It is an adverb that opposes an action, definition, or quality in a clause. It is a function that, by forming contractions, Pairs with auxiliary verbs, dummy do's, intransitive verbs, and models, such as isn't, aren't, won't, couldn't, can't, and, and others. Analyzing the adjective no, aside from the adverb not, we should also consider looking back on our determiners or indefinite articles which take the second component of the word no. Do you remember your non-count and count nouns? Or mass and concrete nouns? However you call them, it is important to remember their accompanying indefinite articles, such as a, an, a null article for concrete nouns, and null article and some for mass nouns. All of these indefinite articles mentioned imply existence, meaning there is. They all imply presence or positivity. We often neglect the other indefinite article, which is for emphasis. The indefinite article any is a determiner of possibility, like in any color will do. It is used for all nouns. It can be for count or non-count. It expresses doubt or a confirmation of absence. That's why they are mainly used in yes or no questions. 
or when you make negative sentences. Let us look at how any is used in the following example clauses. Clauses with any. She has a problem. Does she have any problem? She doesn't have any problem. Does she have a problem? She has no problem. Notice that the first affirmative clause uses an indefinite article A implying existence. But when converted into a yes or no question, the indefinite article changed to any, which expresses doubt. Does she have any problem? It is also correct to ask, does she have a problem? But what is the difference? The difference will be the possibility of not having any problem. When you ask, does she have any problem? It is possible that the person does not have any problem at all. However, for the other yes or no question using an indefinite article, A means one, meaning does she have one problem or more than one problem? That would be the implied meaning. Now let's look at the last sentence. She has no problem. Notice that not plus any is equal to no. Therefore, she doesn't have any problem is the same as she has no problem. In English, the shorter the better. However, they may have a little difference in their meaning. When you say she doesn't have any problem, there is a sort of emphasis or complaint in it. When you say she has no problem, that means it's okay. No problem. Now let's look at another example using an abstract noun. We have, we need some patience. Do we need any patience? We do not need any patience. We need patience. Do we need patience? We need no patience. The same rule applies. If you notice, sometimes some could be omitted in a sentence. That's why we need some patience can be converted into we need patience. And some, being an indefinite article, once again can be converted into any when you're asking same rules. Not plus any is no. We need no patience. Most of the sentences that are negative contain these ingredients. It is also possible to have the affirmative no sentences. I don't have anything here becomes I have nothing here. There isn't anybody at home. There is nobody at home. I didn't see anyone in his room. I saw no one in his room. I don't have anywhere to go to. I have nowhere to go to. They have the same thoughts, however, there's a slight difference when it comes to the feeling that these sentences convey. The sentences on the right are more positive, meaning there is less of a complaint. There's a sort of satisfaction to the negative that they have discovered. However, on the other side, the longer the sentence, the more complaining it becomes or the more intense and emphasized the thoughts become too. The next part is something really interesting for me. We call it the negation portmanteau. When you say portmanteau, this is a word blending the sounds and combining the meaning of two others, such as when you say smoke and fog, it becomes smog. So that is a portmanteau, okay? As I said, not plus any is equal to no. When I say I did not have any idea, the feeling implied is you were 
probably regretful of it or you're sad because of it. You can put did and have together. It will become had and not plus any will become no. I had no idea, which is the same meaning that implies satisfaction or being content with the negativity. <laughs> Both of these sentences are correct. However, when you say I do not have no idea, you already know that that is wrong because of the components of no that I have mentioned. Next one we have not plus one is equal to none. Therefore, when you say not one showed up, that is probably with complaint. And when you say none showed up, those are both correct. But when you say none didn't show up, that is a bad sentence. Next, we have not plus either or is equal to neither nor. I do not speak either Dutch or Thai. Do you see that not there? And we have I speak neither Dutch nor Thai. These sentences are the same. And it's correct. But when you say I don't speak neither Dutch nor Thai, this is double negative, okay? Which is wrong. Next, we have not plus ever, which is equal to never. I have not ever kissed a frog, which is the same as I have never kissed a frog. Both of these sentences are correct. I haven't never kissed a frog is wrong. Now it's time for some practice. You may pause this video, take a piece of paper, and try to write the standard negation for each of the informal English sentences that you will see. Here are the answers. Thank you so much for the attention and if you have learned something new for today, please give this video a like. If you have any comment or any topic that you would like us to cover, please feel free to comment below. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.